Hello, everyone. Welcome. My name is Billy. I'm the one who's been annoying you with all of the handouts and things for today. I'm just going to give you a quick overview of how Zoom works, even though I know we're all pretty familiar with it at this point. At the bottom of the screen, you're going to see a button that says chat. I'm going to type hello in the chat right now. If you have any questions over the course of tonight for Jeannie, please put them in the chat and we will get to those at the end during our Q&A. Jeannie asks that you just keep the chat for questions. It'll be tempting to sort of put your thoughts and ideas and observations, but just use the chat for questions. Otherwise, it can get a little bit too distracting. Uh, if you're currently in gallery view, meaning you're seeing a bunch of tiny little faces on the screen, you're going to want to switch over to speaker view. So up in the top right of your screen, you're going to want to click view and then switch that from gallery to speaker view. And that should make my face really big up on the screen. Uh, but without uh, anything else to say, Jeannie, I'm going to pass it off to you. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Billy, very much. Always glad to see your beautiful smiling faces and um, hoping that uh, we will have fun today. The um, first thing I want to say to everyone is tomorrow is World Voice Day. So uh, that's the day when we recognize and acknowledge voice and for us, particularly, it's a singing voice. So if you have uh, some activities that you're doing um, that would be vocal, um, it would be good for you to go on the World Voice Day website. You could just go on Google and find it and let people know what your World Voice Day activity or activities is because they keep track of it. Well, the idea is to raise awareness about voice all over the world, and we can certainly contribute to that. Um, next, I, I think that um, I want to take you through a, a short talk, maybe like 20 minutes or so, about somatic voice work. Many of you already know what somatic voice work is, but we always have new people every time we do a webinar like this, uh, people who maybe have peripherally heard about it somewhere, and um, for the sake of those people, I'm going to go over the principles. But I'm also going to go over it for people who are familiar with the work because it is fairly complicated uh, when you really get into it. When you start out, it's fairly simple. But like anything else, when you first uh, are exposed, uh, that morphs into something with much more depth and breadth. So it doesn't hurt to review the principles um, I recently heard, uh, no, actually, I saw online on one of the voice teacher sites that my work is about being able to be um, versatile and sing different kinds of music. And that is true, but that's sort of just the tiniest little tip of the iceberg of what it is, because it really is more about owning your voice from the inside out in a respectful and joyful manner but in a way that also is based on what we understand about vocal health and um, functioning in a way that is uh, respectful of the body as much as uh, the um, art of singing. So I hope it's not just that. Now, I am going to try to sh go get my talk, it's a share screen with you. So uh, what is this method? Well, I'll tell you what it is, and it's not me teaching anything about tech, tech stuff. Wah! Somatic voice work is based on working with contemporary commercial music, what we used to call non-classical. Of course, it works with classical music as well, but I focused primarily at the beginning on those styles that uh, were relegated to the non-world, which of course is silly because it's hardly non. It's based upon vocal function. It uses voice science and voice medicine principles. Uh, we try not to use any funny words. Certainly there is no terminology that I made up. And it incorporates a lot of awareness of both your physical body and what you hear. Okay. Uh, we start out by paying attention to what the body looks like and how it functions. That is assessment of, of posture and breathing and um, whether or not this person standing in front of you is strong or um, delicate, whether they're a dancer or a yoga person, 
and um, how much awareness do they have of what's moving or uh, what direction is, is it moving in? How comfortable or how freely are they able to move? Okay, next. In doing that, we are listening to the person sing some simple exercises to assess the range and the kind of sound quality that the voice makes and whether or not we could describe that quality as breathy, clear, nasal, or noisy. So breathy, clear, nasal, or noisy. And then we're listening for register quality, that is a vocal register, which we'll explain in a second next. <clears throat> we also are listening to the vowel sound quality because mostly when we sing, we are sustaining vowels. And we are listening to see how loud and soft the person can sing and other vocal production issues that might catch our awareness. And we're also comparing how the person sounds when they speak to how they sound when they sing. If there is a difference, we would like to know what that difference is. Okay, next. The core work, the first level work, is based on identifying and developing vocal registers. And uh, while we do that to differentiate a vowel sounds one from the other, we stick at first to very simple differences, bright vowels as in smiley, ha ah, ha ha ha, and dark as in crying or sadness, oh, because even little kids can hear and do those two differences. It does not really focus much about resonance. I rarely talk about it unless I'm working with somebody who is classical, in which case then it does come up. Uh, we do incorporate the psychological aspects of teaching as well as uh, singing as being very important and equal to the other aspects of the work. And we are always coming back to the posture and the breathing as primary tools of awareness and coordination. Okay. Register function is a, a vocal fold function. It happens in the larynx in the vocal folds. And uh, this gives us excellent clues as to what's going on in the throat when you make sound. They are the determinators of basic overall vocal quality, uh, and that can be heard separately eventually from the vowels. And they are not about resonance or vocal tract response, although those things are there. We just don't focus a lot of attention on them right away. Next. Uh, the registers that we find primarily in CCM are based on speech or chest register, also called thyroarenoid register or thyroarenoid dominant register, or TA. Um, and uh, occasionally there is some use of head register, but that's less common than it used to be. So we ask singers to learn to use mix or chest mix, which is a little bit lighter and less pressured than belting. And uh, what we want is uh, uh, for the speaking voice to be flexible, strong, healthy, and comfortable uh, so that that can uh, integrate with singing in the same way. Next. A vowel is a concept in your mind and a shape made between your lips and your vocal cords in your throat and includes the shape of your lips, the position of your tongue in the front of your mouth, and uh, the other position elements that happen in the back of the mouth and in the throat. Um, the uh, use of bright and dark starts, starts out just uh, as an external thing. Ah, ah. But later, that begins to influence the shapes of the soft palate and the other structures in the throat. Okay, next. Uh, somatic voice work is structured to work in modules. They're informal, but they are a way to organize the work. The first one is based on physical relaxation and mental focus, just a chance to get the body to kind of get into a singing mode in a comfortable way. And that involves movement, uh, involves loosening up, and using the voice in a nice, light, easy way up and down. The second one is where we do all the hard work of changing uh, vocal patterns using exercises. So uh, we call that extended behavior because that's where we do things that are not like just plain old ordinary speech. Uh, they're not necessarily operatic either, but they are designed to produce a different response in the throat than the one 
the person is using if it is a, a progression in terms of technical function. Um, and the fourth module is where you actually work in songs. So you then take this sound work that you've done in your throat and body into music and interpret the music uh, so that it serves the communication needs that you have as an artist. Along the way, the teacher is evaluating and adjusting as the singer is responding to the directions and they're noticing that interface between uh, singing and speaking and is giving an explanation as uh, things proceed. Okay, next. Generally speaking, in somatic voice work, we try to eliminate constriction. That is, we don't want somebody to squeeze or constrict the throat on purpose. We expect all good function in any style to be done freely and comfortably. And we want to be able to express honest emotion, not like make believe you are sad or uh, try to imitate somebody who's angry. No, we want that to be real. And uh, we try very hard to, to stay with clear terminology and correct only in a, a specific positive manner. Okay, next. Okay, so now we have to learn to listen for function. It's a big element of semantic voice work that is auditory, aural, A-U-R-A-L. So what is the voice and what is it doing? And can we tell the difference? And that means that we learn to hear mechanically because anyone who wants to can learn to sing and anyone can learn to match pitch. That's something that I address in the third level um, because uh, there isn't anyone I've ever encountered in my life who only talks on one note all the time. No one does that, okay? So we all have the inherent ability to change pitch even we, if we don't realize it. Uh, the analogy here of what, what's the difference between what is the voice and what is it doing is, let's say I've learned to play the violin. I should be able to play any violin, any standard violin. But if I'm playing a really elegant instrument that has been finely crafted, what I'm doing might sound a little different because of the violin. Or if I've learned to play different styles on the violin, the way that I play the violin might also affect the sound but there's a difference between how I play the violin and the violin. So in people, we have anatomy. So your throat has a length and a diameter. Your jaw has a certain size in terms of the bones of your mandible. Uh, your whole structure determines, are you a violin? Are you a viola? Are you a cello? Or are you an upright bass? Are you a trumpet? Or are you a tuba? That is how we determine the instrument and then what are you doing in the instrument? So I might be belting, but because I'm a light lyric soprano, I'm not going to sound the same when I'm belting as somebody who's a low voice, dramatic voice, and th that sound could be physiologically the same, but it won't sound the same because it's a different instrument. And you have to learn to hear that, and it takes a while before you can listen that way. Okay, next. When we're working with a contemporary commercial music artist, we want to know something about the style and the expectations of the style. And um, we want to take a look at the present set, set of vocal abilities. Like what does this person sound like and how did this voice function separate from the style? So we want to make a distinction. Um, we've all heard opera singers say, oh, I can sing rock and roll and then they go, Jesus Christ, for starting you know, well, I don't think so. Just because you know how to use the uh, stylistic gestures of the music doesn't mean that you, you're functionally doing what the music is uh, written to be uh, done. So we make that adjustment. And then, of course, we have parameters for working with kids, teens, young adults, older adults, and senior citizens. Oh. And we adjust the time frame. I sometimes work with people only once in an immediate situation if they're here in New York for a performance or an audition. Um, but sometimes I see people ongoingly for a long time. I have some students who have checked in with me as professionals for over 30 years. So it, it varies. Next. Okay, so we use vocal exercises to change habitual vocal patterns. 
So this is a, uh, the exercise comes from me as a stimulus and the sound comes from the student as a response. So if I don't ask for something specific, the student's not going to give me something specific. And if I ask for something specific and the student doesn't give me what I asked for, I need to clarify if the student understood what I asked for. So this dynamic back and forth allows you to, to help the student figure out how to run their own machine. And this helps the singer become more satisfied with his or her voice and achieve their vocal and musical goals. Um, this also along the way cultivates greater awareness of the sound, of the sensations of making sound, and of the movements that are involved in the body as the sound emerges. Next. The default position of the whole machine is what, what does it sound like if I pick up my violin and I don't tune it first, I just play it. That would be the default of the violin that day. But if in getting ready to play it, I got to listen to it and tune it and tune up the strings, that would be what we do with exercises when we warm up. So we have the default position of the sound of the larynx, the vocal folds, the vocal tract, and the breathing pattern. So right now, if I were to sing for you, I would be singing right here. Da -da 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 -ba -da -da -ba. And you can hear, I think, that there's a little noise in that. And that's because my left vocal fold doesn't always work very well in my mid-range. That's something that happened to me 12 years ago as a result of being sick. And that left vocal fold, uh, unfortunately, has a little divot. So occasionally it makes noise. Um, the uh, process of making sound is one of continuously growing awareness. And you can ask anyone who's worked with me for a long time will tell you they have way more awareness now about this process than they did when they began. And this helps create new vocal production patterns as needed that are authentic and identifiable in a unique way. Okay, next. In somatic voice work, we never ask for anybody to move any structure in the throat deliberately. So we do not want our students to deliberately tighten the tongue or deliberately squeeze the throat or try to deliberately move the vocal folds. Uh, we don't want to do any funny things in the throat in order to sing. We are not interested in asking the student to do anything that's restrictive. We don't want holding, forcing, gripping, or any other maneuver that gets in the way because it's not necessary. You can sing anything you want once you learn how without doing any of that. And um, that actually gets in the way of being emotionally available when you're making sound. Next. So we try to correct in the positive. In other words, rather than saying to a student, oh, don't make that sound, make this sound, I would say, oh, hey, you know, this is the sound you're making, but I think it would be better if we made this sound instead. That's a positive correction. It's a conscious use of language. Um, if the sound isn't going where the student would like, and we acknowledge that, oh, okay, it didn't go where you wanted. Okay, that's fine. Let's try again and let's see if we can get more of X instead of Y. Uh, we stick to plain English and no made up, you know, oh, sing this like it's an elephant's trunk. Let me stay away from that. And we ask questions. How was that? What did you hear? What did you feel? What was the experience? And not all the feedback that comes from the student is good. Well, I don't know. I thought that was pretty bad or I didn't like it. Oh, that exercise is so hard. Okay. You have to acknowledge all those things because that's part of the process. And certainly uh, as a singing teacher, if you take offense at that or any kind of feedback like that, that's always going to be a bad thing. Uh, next. Okay, so it's all right as teachers of singing to not know. And even I am happy to say, gee, I don't know what's going on here. Let me go check with my colleagues or a speech pathologist, or a medical doctor who's a laryngologist. I don't expect myself to know everything, even though I've been teaching for almost 53 years. 
there's always going to be something you don't know. And so it's better to say, hmm, I don't know what this is. And then we have a whole community here of many high level experts that we can share information with. Um, we also go slowly. It's not a contest. And we seek some progress in every lesson, but there's lots of ways to see progress. It's not a thing. Uh, and we try to be available if a student has a question in the middle of the week or between lessons to, to answer it. Okay, next. Ideally speaking, somatic voice work seeks to be a healing modality, which means it should make the singer comfortable with and in their voice and between how the person thinks and what happens in the body. And of course, between the teacher and the student, or the one who's singing and the one who's teaching, and ultimately between the, the artist, the singer, and the world at large. Uh, we want to bring our beautiful, wonderful, gorgeous music out into the world to make the world a better place because the world really needs us to do that. Next. Okay, so our Summer Institute is coming in July. Uh, we are at Baldwin Wallace University, which is in Berea, Ohio, which is outside of Cleveland in the middle of the United States. Runs three levels, three days each. First one is uh, from the 13th to the 15th, then the 16th to the 18th, and then the 19th to the 21st. Um, there are a lot of elements in each of those three days. And one of the core elements is one-to-one uh, -one work with a faculty member in what we call breakouts. So once we teach you what the information is and you get intellectual information from the course, then you get to use it. So you can't learn to sing from a book or a video or a course. You have to sing in order to sing. You cannot learn to sing unless you sing. And so even people who have vocal fold problems or issues apply this in the breakouts right away on day two of level one. And then when we go into level two, we get into the material that most people want when they come. They expect, oh, what, ex what other exercises can I put into my bag of tools that I can get exercises from Jeannie? And um, that's not what you get from me. I don't give you a sheet of exercises of notes and syllables because that's useless. Because you can sing exercises poorly. You can even hurt yourself singing exercises. There's no magic in fa fe fi fo fu or ba be e e o a e. Nothing. Doesn't work. You have to actually know this other stuff. And then any exercise, even two notes in a row, can be a, a teaching experience. Next. Okay, so we have some information on my website, Voice Workshop, but it's not up to date. In fact, I should have asked Billy to take that off. But you could get the rest of the information from the Somatic Voice Work website and also from the Baldwin Wallace website, um, which we should have listed, but I didn't put it here. But it's www.bw for Baldwin Wallace.edu and then slash my last name, Lovetri, L-O-V-E-T-R-I. It's not Love Try, it's Lovetri, <laughs> okay? Um, so those are the, that's a, just an overview, a sketch of the principles of somatic voice work. Uh, there's a lot more to it, particularly in the second level where we, we go into something that I've called now the solution sequence. Um, it teaches teachers to create exercises on the spot as needed, uh, depending upon what they observe in the student. So that's why you don't get any exercises. And when students are writing down, oh, well, first she did a five note scale on ah, and then she did staccatos on e, and then she did a slide up and down on a fifth on, ooh, I say, take, take that out of your book, throw it away. That's not why you're here. And that makes the work a little different. And so this includes being able to work with um, all kinds of sounds, um, beatboxers and inhalation phonation and people singing, making all kinds of crazy weird noises, um, people who are not sustaining sounds like a jazz artist who is doing scatting, 
it's not based on only legato and the breath singing on the breath yeah sometimes we do that and sometimes we don't uh, it's a much more comprehensive look at vocal pedagogy than that which is taught in most college programs which is still based on the 1800s philosophy that came down from mostly central and northern europe uh, in the 15 1600s we're not there now and the vast majority of ccm is amplified we have no information from science none on amplified voices but i'm in the midst of changing that we are beginning to get research uh, structures and that will change over the next generation that we will be able to talk about the interface between a microphone speakers of different kinds and monitors which are crucial and the way the person is singing because uh, the, the electronic situation really requires a whole different vocal production a different default than singing unamplified in an opera house so if we apply singing um, that that work singing unamplified in an opera house to somebody who's doing gentle jazz at a conversational volume that doesn't transfer well so if your background is strictly classical you would have to wear a different hat with semantic voice work and if you are a jazz vocalist and you really have learned only very basic stuff about your voice then you'd have to wear a different hat as well the goal is not to make you sound like somebody else it's to make you sound more like yourself and um, not to uh, imitate but to cultivate uh, I think we could talk about that for a long time but but that's enough that gives you the overview and then if you have questions you're certainly welcome to write them in the chat and I will do my best to answer them uh, after the fact okay thank you now, um, Billy, I assume we're going to have a work with our young singers yeah, now, right? Yeah, we've got a couple of singers for you to work with. So the first one is Claire. So Claire, you should be able to unmute yourself. Hello. Hi, Claire. Hello. And how old are you? Uh, I'm 16. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. What kinds of stuff do you sing? Uh, mainly musical theater things. Uh, I do a lot of plays and stuff, but I'm also in like a acapella group, so some pop stuff here and there. Okay, and have you been training your voice with a teacher? Yes, I train with um, Ben Sarnitza. And how long have you been doing that? Not long with him. I've only been with him for probably two, three months. Okay, and before that? I had a little bit of training for like maybe again like three months oh okay so you're still relatively new that makes sense because you're young um do you have a song that you're going to do or am i just yeah. going to help you vocalize yeah we've been working on take me to the world in my um lessons so we have that today okay well when you're ready why don't you sing me okay thank you We shall see the world come true, we shall have the world. I won't be afraid with you, we shall have the world. I'll hold your hand, and no, I'm not alone. We shall have the world to keep such a lovely clear wonderful yay i'm sorry you can't hear everybody applauding but they would be <laughs> thank you um so you sang that very beautifully um i would say that vocally you're in a really nice place for your age um and uh you made a nice transition as you went higher into your head mix do you know that you did that <laughs> yes we've been working on my mix because it's a little getting there but um 
yeah, we're trying to focus on getting more of the mixy sound and like having my higher heady mix get a little clearer because I kind of struggle with like that noise you were talking about earlier. Yes, a very, very common issue that happens with, especially at your age. Um, <clears throat> is there anything in particular in the excerpt that you just did that you find challenging or difficult? Yeah, I would say so anytime it has that jump from like with you or mm -hmm. any of the after uh, I'll hold your hand and no, I'm not alone. All of those are harder into that bigger section. Yeah, well, that makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> um, one of the ways that um, you can help yourself is to spend a little bit more time on thinking about what your body's doing when you breathe. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I noticed that there was a lot of upper body movement as you were singing this kind of thing, which mm -hmm. we all do, but we have to learn not to do because you want to be able to get the inhalation to, to uh, move your rib cage a little bit more than your upper chest. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, the, Billy, do we have uh, the sheet music for this? Yep. I'd like to find the... Da, what she just said. Da, 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 de, da, de, da, da. Okay, so the first thing we want to take a look at in those uh, higher places is to take a look at the vowels that you're sustaining. And uh, those open vowel sounds are tricky. Mm -hmm. They require a lot of connection and strength in your body and your throat. Um, okay. Are you wanting the... The part where it starts just going higher. Yeah, higher. that's fine. From there, I'll hold your hand. So I just wanted to have you, um, Claire, stand up and just sing those four notes. I'll hold your hand. Okay. I'll hold your hand. Okay. So the uh, vowel sounds on hold and hand allow you to sing with a little bit more open space in your mouth and your throat. And that's actually very good, what you just did. I want you to see if you can sing the, from the pitch, one pitch to the next as smoothly as possible. Um, so let's, let me have you just do, ah, kind of slide your way from note to note. Yeah. Now, when you get to the word hand on the G, it wants to go pretty chesty, yes? Mm -hmm. So sing it a little softer. I'll hold your hand. Okay? Sing yeah. the words. I'll hold your hand. Right. So that way, hold and hand match each other a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Right. Do it again so you can figure out what that relationship is. Mm -hmm. I'll hold your hand. Right. Okay. Now, is it all right if I speak to the teachers who are watching about you? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. So, those of you that are watching, um, this is a place where uh, the registration changes, and in her case, very nicely. But it is a tricky place, especially as you're a student, you're just learning. And so what can we do now? This is to nail it down in a specific place and a specific way. It's not just saying, oh, Claire, could you sing that more smoothly? Well, she probably could. But is that really specific and helpful? Maybe not. Because what if it's not so smooth and then what? Would, would she just keep trying it over and over again to be smoother? I mean, that is what most people do what they teach they just make it smoother but here we're trying to we're talking about the two vowels in the very close pitch to uh, each other it's a whole step difference <clears throat> and allowing her to soften on the, the lower pitch takes a little bit more of that heady mix into that g okay and then she has to pay attention to what happened when she did that so that she can aim for that as a target all right now if we go on billy scroll down a little more So the same thing, do ah, just 
the whole thing going on? Now, can you sing it so that you're sliding from note to note? Mm -hmm. ah, it doesn't have to be at the normal tempo. Just go slow and slide your way from note to note. Okay? Okay. Okay, so the first two notes were really sliding, and then your throat went, nah, I'm not doing that. Yeah, no. I like forgot which part it even was. I know. Well, I mean, you know, this is a small stuff, but it, it's tricky. So the word no, can you see the, um, uh, the music on your uh, computer? Yes. All right, so no is on that A again. We're hanging around this note a lot. So just do, um, hum, just hum. forces your throat to behave a little bit more deliberately and it gives you a little more control but you really have to listen to that slidey feeling so do it mm -hmm. again okay so what was that like that was definitely a lot smoother like the whole right. way through right right so all of this is a way to sneak around in the back door of this register di difference to make those higher notes behave better. Not because you sang them badly or wrong when you did it on your own, but just that this is what's challenging about the song and how is it that we can break down what you're doing into chunks that your brain and your throat can manage, what you're doing beautifully. So now let's see if you can do the words. Um, I know. Yeah, just from that same place. Mm -hmm. And no, I'm not alone. Yeah, that was very impressive. That Thank keeps you. everything together a little bit more. And, and yeah. this is important because we don't speak like this. You know, this is not quite like speech. And we say, oh, sing the song like you're speaking. Well, what does that mean? I don't talk like this, and you don't either. But when you sing, we're expecting you to be able to do that. Why? You know, what, you, yeah. what we want to do is pitch, 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 pitch. Now, when we get to alone, what vowel are you sustaining on the word loan? Oh, uh, like oh. Uh. Yeah, well, like an O. Oh. Yeah, just an O. Oh. oh. So just do a long and think of an a vowel and then an o vowel. A long. Okay, that was better, right? Do one more, same time, same place. A long. Okay, so that's a nice mixy high note there. Does it feel comfortable? Yeah. Okay, now it's a little bit noisy because it's a little louder than your voice is ready to make it. So can you do the same thing, but not, just like two tiny little notches softer? Yeah. Alone. Alone. Right. So when you first hit the O, alone, can you stop and not, uh, no, just go up and park yourself on that first part of the note and stop. Right. Right. That's a better way to get at that pitch. Now, yeah. let's go ahead and, uh, Billy, you were right before uh, to go back up. And let's see if we can hold everything together. So we're going to go from I'll hold your hand. And you think of going, I'll hold your hand. And then you're going to take a breath, and, and you think of keeping everything as if it were all strung together. 
All right. Okay. So let's do that. yourself singing O oh, up there on own oh. mm -hmm. now the next part we shall have the world to keep which is the hard part because it sits right at the top of the transition right so mm -hmm. let's try this can you say we shall have the world to keep nice and full we shall have the world to keep okay that's pretty good do it again. We shall have the world to keep. Right. So you notice how your throat wants to clack there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It says, we shall have the world to keep. That's a tricky place. So now let's do, let's work on it from a vocal place. So let's do, uh, well, let's work on A because A is a nice vowel to work on for more of a mixy place. So let's do, um, let's do an octave. I'll start you down here on B. Ah, you smile as smoothly as you can across that octave. That's from B to B. Okay. Ah. okay, so you just do twice. Now, your high note, ah, doesn't really go into the mixier place. Kind of gets stuck in that slightly chesty place. Yeah. So it will help if you think that the high note A is a different shape than the low note A. And the easiest way to, to change that shape is to do it like you were surprised. Uh, 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 uh. Right? And you're going to have to make that mental adjustment from the low note to the high note. So try it again. Yeah, too many yeah, times, just two. But... <laughs> now, how loud is that? Fairly loud, like a six or a seven. Yeah, so how about you do it like a three or a four? Yeah. Now, don't make the bottom note quite so loud and be surprised. <gasps> ah. Yeah. Uh... Too many yeah. times. I need to That's count right. one, two. <laughs> Now, your job is to pay attention to what you feel on the slide. Uh, listen and feel what happens when you slide up. You don't have to go as slow as I just did, but slow it down a little bit. Yep. Uh, yeah. Now, did you change the shape of the, the uh, on the high note that time? Not really. No, not really. Okay. <laughs> so go ahead and just just an exercise. Just go ah and move what you can move as you go up. Okay. Ah. Right. Now when you come down, come down gently. Ah. And not ah. Ah, because it'll crack <laughs> if you do that, right? Okay, yeah. Just go up a little higher. Uh, yeah, that was definitely better. Mm -hmm. What did you think about that? Um, I think I just need to focus a little more on down. The up is fairly good. I feel like I'm switching pretty soon to like that headier place. Like it's more of uh, instead of like uh, and then yeah down yeah what if we had a magic wand and we could make this work like you know instantaneously we're looking for the back of your mouth like where your soft palate is is to lift up and stay there by itself which comes from your concept your thought about what kind of an ah is it anyway and this is where the ah but also there needs to be some coordination with what goes on in your throat. So I'm going to do another couple exercises and uh, Billy, you'll keep track of the time here because I'm yep. lost how much I'm doing. Um, so Claire, I want you to do this like you're laughing. I want you to do <laughs> Okay, so try that. 
Good. And then as you do this, keep the in between very short and clear. So don't let air leak out. But <laughs> See, that's good because then your throat's not cracking and kicking. It's just mm -hmm. going, oh, okay. So before you sing, think and then sing. <laughs> yep. Now go up with a very clear awareness of your body. Keep your rib cage as uh, calm as possible and just bouncing your belly muscles. <laughs> Yay! Good! Okay. <laughs> Whoa. Good. Now stay surprised inside. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> Good. Now go ahead and get a little louder and see if you can keep them evenly loud up and down. Okay. <laughs> Could have done a lot. Yeah, that one, that one gave you trouble. Do it again. <laughs> okay. uh, 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 uh. Like a, a belly laugh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, good. Let's do one more. Ha 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 Good. Okay, now we're going to build on this a little bit and we're going to do an open hum. So this is for strength and stability in this mixy place that we're working on. So we're going to do this. <clears throat> So we're going up a fifth and down, and then up an octave and down. And the sound here is, uh, this is one of those semi-occluded exercises, but it's going to feel like it's up behind your nose. Mm. Okay, so just say, mm. Mm. right. So see if you can stay in that sound, go up and then down. So, mm. Now, if you come in a little more gently and slide a little more carefully, it won't kick so much. Okay. That's better. So your goal here is to get control over the slide. Mm -hmm. How much control do you have over the slide? Everything else is fine. smooth that is now, now that I'm gonna talk good. I'm gonna talk about you to the teachers again so <laughs> in it, it she's got a nice mixy place but when I asked her what was challenging she said understandably and rightly so it's that upper stuff that's tough to negotiate coming from the bottom so it, it, this is a mechanical way to make that better the other stuff is a physical a ch challenge for the, the brain to, to track the vowels and the volume. So these are our tools. We always come back to how loud is it? What vowel are you on? What kind of a ah? Uh, what kind of an ah? Uh, what does that mean in terms of what you feel and how you feel it? And that varies according to the person. And then how much coordination do you have over that process as it happens? Well, Claire's smart. She gets it right away. She does a couple of them, and then after that, the throat goes, oh, okay, that's what you want. Yeah, well, okay, good. And so this is uh, the mechanism to achieve the goal in a stepwise manner, in a way that, in this case, Claire could execute and understand. So this is building on what she's already doing, not taking it away or f making it wrong. But this is something that has to be repeated. It's like you go to the gym, you don't just do two reps and then you go home. You have to build up the number of reps you do and then you have to put more weights on the rep. So with the voice, especially at, a, at her age, you do this gradually. You know, Benjamin is not having her scream her brains out on the high notes. It may be 
two or three years from now, she can do that uh, slightly more chesty mixing. It'll be just fine. But first, to get that nice heady mix and have everything be stable is the progression to make at this age. And so, Claire, I had no idea what this is going to do until um, we go back to the song. So let's take a look at Take Me to the World, la, la, whatever that part is. Billy, can we go back there? Take me one quick second. Sure, sure. Okay. All right, I've got like a lot of tabs. There we go. Okay. Oh no, I think I've scrolled too far. What? Birds. I think we've passed that. Here we go. There we go. Okay. So oh, we man. were working on, I'll hold your hand. And then, so now if we can get all of that to behave itself, you have to forgive me because this is right where my left vocal cord doesn't want to go um then it won't be so hard for you it should behave better so let's start again with the i'll hold and you see how much you have to think of that slide and only go where you have control over those pitches okay not real loud like moderate volume okay. and sing the words I'll hold your hand and know I'm not alone. Good, go oh, on. And then, did you, okay. We shall have the world to keep. Good. Such a lovely world we'll yep. weep. Yep. We shall have the world forever. forever. Well, I thought that was a lot better. What did you think? I thought that was good, yeah. Okay, it didn't wiggle around quite so much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think now, there was just, less breaks. Yeah, just generally, you're singing a little bit louder than your mix can manage. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's good you yeah. have that much um, pressure that you can, breath support that you have that much to use. But this is not, this is not an issue that does better with more breath support. Yeah. Teachers, do you understand that? One breath support is not the solution. And that is where most people go. Oh, better support. No. More laryngeal stability. More glottal resistance. And so the tendency is, well, if I get louder, it'll be better. No. Not now. Not in this case. Sometimes, but not here. So, um, um, this should, <laughs> this should give you and Benjamin lots to work on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um you, let's go back and have you sing it from where you were before the whole like the whole excerpt and let's see where you go and then really think about your posture and your breathing like connect to the body as you go through phrase to phrase and we'll okay, try the whole the whole that, excerpt. Um, with the track yeah with the track and okay. now your your son is hitting you right in the face so make sure you stay just to the left of the sun. Okay. <laughs> I know. Okay. Goodness. Okay, perfect. That's all right. Okay. We shall see the world come true. We shall have the world. I won't be afraid with you. We shall have the world. I'll hold your hand and know I'm not alone. We shall have the world to keep such a lovely world. We'll weep. We shall have the world forever. For Okay, so everything was good except world. Mm -hmm. World wobbled around. Yeah. Did you hear that? Yeah, I kind of, I heard like the rest was good. I was like, okay, this is going good. And then world happened. I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, the interesting thing with the where world was is that you overshot the target. Mm -hmm. Like you went past where your throat was like, oh, what? I can't, what? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, whoop. Uh, what's that? Is that a whoop? E flat. Is it E flat? Is that what that is? We have it on the music. Yeah, it's an E flat. Okay, so I, I'm going to just work on that one pitch. Mm -hmm. um, so let's do um, part of the problem with this is it's got an R in it. Vowels that connect up to an R are really tricky mm -hmm. because you can't leave it out. You can't say, well, you have to put an R in. But a R is a R isn't a great sound to sing. So mm -hmm. when you work on this, we're going to go from the ah, uh, the, which we're going to make like an ah, uh, the, and wa. then wa, the wa. We're not going to do world. We're going to just do the wa. Wa, 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 wa. So just do that. Okay. So make your ah uh, a little bit more of an aw. Uh. Wa, mm -hmm. wa. A W R. Ooh, see, then it didn't go yeah. all over the place. So yeah. actually, we're not trying to open this up more. We're actually trying to contain it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a confusing instruction, Claire. So if I, if you don't understand what in the world I'm talking about, I, that's fine. Just tell me. But I actually want you to sing the and world on the least amount of exhale you can manage. Okay? It's okay. almost like you're going to go. Okay? So just those two syllables. See? Then the high yeah. note doesn't get away from you and go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, I understand emotionally that this needs to open up here, you know, be emotionally big. But functionally first, just get it to hold together. Then you can begin to explore more about the emotional energy the phrase has to have. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's like a short-term goal first and then the long-term goal. Um, right. So now let's do, we shall have the world. I actually do the world. And the rubato is on forever. So, and then uh -huh. it's marked underneath the accompaniment con la voce. So you can take your time with, we shall have the world forever. And that's actually nice because you can really make some uh, transition in there as well. So it doesn't go, uh, all right? right. So start with that um, from right there. All right. So we lost our nice, steady, oh, wa. Yeah, right? wa. Yeah. Wah. All right. Now, I'm going to go in a different direction, and we're going to go down to the bottom. So now we're going to do, this is uh, A flat. Wa, 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 wa. Good. Now, can you do these without exhaling a whole lot? Just enough to make the sound. Good. Now, on the way up, your throat's going to want to be louder as you go up. Just keep it the same volume. Don't let it get louder. That's what you want. Excellent. Okay, is that difficult? No, it doesn't sound like it. Okay, so now we're going to do an octave. Wah, 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 but don't get louder. Just keep the volume the same. Wah, wah, wah. Wah, 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 wah. 
Wah, 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 wah. Yes. Wah, 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 wah. Good. Now, keep your posture nice and tall. Keep your ribs as open as you can get them to be without feeling stuck. And take your time and breathe all the way down to the bottom of your lungs toward your belly. Wah, 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 wah. Yes! Wah, 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 wah. Mm-hmm. Wah, 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 wah. Good. Now, you can get louder if you can keep the volume the same, going up and down, and not be louder either on the bottom or the top. Wah, 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 all one volume. Wah, 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 wah. Wah, 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 wah. Mm-hmm. Straight out. Wah, 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 wah. Good. Make your bottom note a little bit on the darker side. Go a little more toward, oh, I'm so sorry. Wah. Wah, 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 wah. Mm-hmm. Wah, 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 wah. Okay, now I'm getting funny distortion, I think, in just the this lovely zoom situation was that clear or noisy it was pretty clear from where i am but the middle bits were a little fuzzy okay well i don't mind fuzzy as long as you're trying to get the first note clear do it again the bottom note needs to be a little bit more oh a little darker a little more chesty you can put a little more pressure on the first note Wah, 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 wah. That's it. That was good. Now, you can get loud, but make the first note dark. Wah. Let me breathe right. <laughs> yeah, take your time. Wah, 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 wah. Right. Okay. Now, honestly, Claire, in, in two or three months, this whole thing will hang together better your throat will cooperate more, and the, th the sound will feel more steady without all the flipping. But mm -hmm. it is slow. You know, this is something to cultivate because this is not where we talk. We don't mm -hmm. talk like that! But that's sort of where the song asks you to go. So mm -hmm. you have to actually be nice about how you're asking your throat to take this pressure because it is pressure. But it's mm -hmm. got to be willing. Your vocal cords have to be willing to accept that. And it it takes time, okay? I, I think especially because the word world is so open and then it's like such an odd, odd shape to make. World, world, world. The bottom position, wah, 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 has to behave. So do one more on wah, 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 and do the whole thing about, about a seven or an eight. Let's see where it goes. Yeah. It might crack, we'll see. Okay. Wah, 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 wah. Okay. Go one more. Darker on the bottom. Mm -hmm. wah, 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 wah. Interesting okay. rhythm, but <laughs> Oh, that doesn't matter right now. We're not worrying about the rhythm. Okay. Do one more. And and stay on the top. Wah 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 wah. Wah 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 wah. Mm -hmm. Can you go more to head on the top? More your yeah. soprano sound? Wah, 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 wah. Yeah, see, that's a better choice. Because mm -hmm, your throat good. is capable of doing that sound, but not the one that you did before, although intentionally it was in the right place. Your throat just can't handle that right now. Right. Okay? So this is all stuff you can work on. Are you cool with this? Yeah, that was cool. The end was good. That was good. <laughs> Yay. Thank you so much. Thank you. You were wonderful. Applause, applause, so applause. Good. Thank you. That was, was awesome. great. Just great. Thank you. Okay, now we have our right, next The next singer we have is Toy Howard. And Toy, I have you on here twice. Oh, there you go. Perfect. All right. Hi, Toy. 
Hello, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Um, <laughs> where are you? I am in New York City. Oh, you're here. Okay. Yes. And uh, what kind of stuff do you sing? Um, I sing pop, gospel, R&B, a little bit of musical theater. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. How old are you? I am 23. I had to remember my age for a second. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you get to be my age, you try to forget what your age is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And um, have you been studying? Yes, um, I just graduated from uh, NYU undergrad last year, a year ago. Okay, from Tisch or mm -hmm. Steinhardt? From Tisch. Tisch, okay. Well, so what are you going to sing for me today? Yes, I am going to sing um, I Got You Babe from The Share Show. Okay. That's what I will be singing. All so. right, good. <laughs> Let me play this because it's good. They say our love won't pay the rent Before it's earned, our money's all been spent I guess that's so, we don't have a pot But at least I'm sure of all the things we got Babe, I got you babe I got you babe I got flowers in the spring I got you to wear my ring And when I'm sad, you're a clown And if I got scared, you're always around Great. Oh, that was great. That was wonderful. You would be hearing applause if we were in person. Um, so uh, what's hard about this piece? Um, before, I had to do it for an audition not too long ago. Before, I felt like um, the ending part of the song, I just felt a lot of tension. I had a lot of tension um, in my chest and shoulders and neck. Um, and also just balancing, I guess, my lo my lower register in the in the beginning part also maybe like a richer tone or. OK, all right. Yeah. So. Uh, just from a strictly vo vocal technique, vocal function place. Um, uh, it's best if you start the whole thing as mixy as you can. Because otherwise, when you go up, it's going to feel like it's another universe. Yeah. And your speaking voice is low. You, yes. You know that, right? <laughs> yes. So, so here, this is a challenge in a way. Um, <laughs> this is, you're not going to like what I'm going to say. <laughs> we live in a society that thinks low-voiced women are sexy. And that's like a cool thing. Hmm. But from a functional standpoint, if you're going to sing, you got to sing where the instrument hangs together. So I'm old now. If I if I allowed myself to talk down here, which I couldn't when I was young, but I can now, <laughs> if I, I let myself sing, sp speak here, I would have a terrible time getting out of this sound to go up. Hmm. Even though it, it's probably more attractive than my actual voice. I know my speaking voice could be very um, harsh. But... I was always more concerned about singing than speaking, and I learned early on in my training that I had to speak where I could sing, not speak where I sound good speaking and then I can't sing at all, hmm. right? So this is a place where if, if you just brighten and lighten your speech a little bit, that's going to help the singing. Mm -hmm. And um, it shares a good example of somebody who is when she was young. She's taken a lot of training and she sounds better now in some ways than when she was 25 or 30 years old. Hmm. Um, so can you just say the beginning of the phrase that you, uh, the little excerpt you just sang, just say it? Just say it, yes. Uh huh. They say our love won't pay the rent. Before it's earned, our money's all been spent. Okay, so that's a good place for it to go. 
but I would say even a little higher than that. They say our monies, you know, they say our, whatever the words is, I forgot. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> try to get the speaking voice, try to get your speaking voice a little higher. Mm -hmm. Okay. They say our love won't pay the rent before it's earned our money's all been spent. Wow, like that's a universe different. That's really different. That did not sound like it was effortful, was it? Not really. No, you had to think about it. Yeah. Okay. So mm -hmm. now you you're a graduate of of Tish. If if you're doing Shakespeare, that may not be the exact same way you're going to use your voice as if you were doing a situation comedy, or if you were going to do something where you were playing a cat. Okay. The way that you use your voice is just as much of a skill, a craft, as your acting work. Okay, so your job is sing where you speak where you can sing, and you just did, and the sound was <clears throat> fantastic. It was it was fabulous. Now the question is, can you sing a couple of phrases even if it's a cappella? I don't know what note you started on. They say they say E flat G. They say. They say, okay, so mm -hmm. just sing, they say, blah, 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 and sing the phrase from where you just spoke. Okay. They say our love won't pay the rent before it's earned, our money's all been spent. Yeah. Now, I, I think that works. What do you think? Yeah, I think it works. Okay. Two. No. It's a yeah, different place in my voice, but... It still yeah, works. and the, the good mm -hmm. news is that you could just do it just because I mm -hmm. said, try this and you did. <laughs> oh, this is so wonderful. Um, <laughs> you know, if you do a show and you uh, get cast as a swing, you're going to have, you know, to sing all over the place. I mean, one night you're covering Grizabella and the next night you're covering Rumple, whatever his name was again. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so there isn't a place to park your voice mm. and the choice has to be <clears throat> where can you speak so that I can speak and go all the way up here and I can speak all the way up there and then I can come all the way down and speak all the way down there. Then I have the most control and the most choice. Okay. Mm. Now in the beginning when she's the whole, this is not a great dramatic piece here, but she is, they are saying to each other, well, everything is crummy except I got you, mm -hmm. you know. So it wouldn't hurt for you to try expressing a little more emotionally in this sound you just did. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, they say that we're going to be this and that, but I got you, babe. Mm -hmm. I got you. So everything's going to be okay. So um, uh, speak the words with that intention as a, your acting choice mm -hmm. in this new yeah. adjustment. Yes. <clears throat> speak it right. Just speak yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was about to sing it. Okay. Um, they say our love won't pay the rent before it's earned. Our money's all been spent. I guess that's so we don't have a pot, but at least I'm sure of all the things we got. Yeah, see, that's the whole package right there. See, that's going to give you, I'm going to want to cast you now. Because <laughs> it sounds good, and I believe you. Mm -hmm. All right, now sing it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, sing it, yes. Yeah. They say our love won't pay the rent Before it's earned, our money's all been spent I guess that's so we don't have a pot, but at least I'm sure of all the things we got. Yeah. Babe. <laughs> keep going. I got you, babe. Okay. Yes. Now, so, um, The, the delivery of this and the acting that went with the delivery <clears throat> is something that you can choose to do mm -hmm. twice. So, you know, um, 
if I asked you to play a character, I don't know, suppose you were in Shrek or something, and you were going to play a, a ogre, you might have to get used to talking and singing here because that's where the character is asking you to go. So yeah. in this case, because of the transition into the mix in the middle, it's better if you start where you just did. It's still fairly low, so it's tempting to go, they say, art, they blah, blah, blah. and then you, mm -hmm. the argument is the throat doesn't really feel comfortable coming out of that. Let's yeah. do a couple exercises and stay in this mixy place. It's similar to what I, I um, just did with Claire. So Laffy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Now, your job with these is to make them as even and consistent as you can as you come up and down. Okay? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Good. Can you do it louder than that? E mm -hmm. Louder all the way through the same volume. <laughs> now, if you lose it, make yourself go back and think laughing, 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 laughing. <laughs> <laughs> That's better. Now, no more exhale on the H's than necessary. So it's not ha, it's ha. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah. Do that one again. See if it'll get a little louder all the way through. Okay. Excellent. Now, mentally, you have to make some kind of picture of how it sounds or how it feels or how it looks, and then that's your target before you sing it, okay? Mm -hmm. You're having trouble with the pitch because it's a cappella. That's all right. Um, so what are you thinking of, if you can say, before you sing? What is it that you're thinking as you come in? Um, I think I, and I think I see like a step. Like for the first note, I see a step. That's what I'm visualizing or a point. Okay. All right. So let's give you a different idea about, mm -hmm. let's think that the shape of the ah inside your mouth is wide and high. So mm -hmm. again, like a surprise. <gasps> oh, hi. I didn't know. Ah, okay. And then the registration is just a little bit of a speaky chest, a speaky mix. So I want you to do ah, 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 and as consistently as you can on that entrance every time. Make the shape and then sing the pitch. <laughs> yeah. Now that hasn't got very much chest in it. Can you get it to be a little more chesty? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. That's your target every time, like a machine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good. Now that way you're not exhaling a lot on that first H. That's good. Mm -hmm. And people watching, this is about glottal resistance again. She got a nice mix. We're trying to strengthen it. Ha 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 ha. Yep. Think about laughing. Ha 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 Yeah. See, that's louder and clearer, but it's still mix. Ha ha ha. Perfect. Okay, so now let's go back to the arpeggio. And I'm making that shape and I'm staying there. Boom, boom, boom. That's it. Ha, 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 ha. Now make sure when I'm you like come in on the, the first point. note. Yeah, you're a little off pitch. I'm not <laughs> about that. Okay. The first note you have to know before you sing it, where is that shape and how are you going to get that first note to come in as clear and firm as possible? Ha. Ha, 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 ha. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you have to literally think of something specific 
before you sing that stay still even though you're changing pitch excellent excellent now let's do the open mouth hum that i did with claire so we're going to do and you do that as evenly as you can at a moderate volume like a five or a six Good. Now, see how much control you can get over the slide, both going up and coming out. Yeah, you got to really think about mm. mm-hmm. Your throat's going, what? What? <laughs> <laughs> Good. I know it's a little bumpy there, but it's pretty. It's holding up pretty good. Go right through the noise. Mm-hmm. Yep. Good. Now when you come down, because you're coming down and the throat wants to flip the chest, come down a little quieter than you go up. You can go up loud, but come down soft. Excellent. What does that feel like? It feels very different. (laughs) It feels like it feels here. Mm -hmm. It feels it feels very open and but like very it feels open but very focused at the yeah. same time. Well, it, it is both yeah. of those. That is correct. Mm-hmm. Okay. So done this way, this is a strengthening exercise for your throat mm-hmm. and a coordination exercise for your air. Mm-hmm. Okay. So okay. skill wise, this is a more sophisticated way to work the machine. Okay. You're doing mm-hmm. great. I'm yeah. just he- helping you process what actually is yeah. going on, which is great. Mm-hmm. Let's do a couple more. Mm-hmm. Right. And tiptoe mm. on the way down. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Now that's when your yeah. throat goes, okay, now that's enough of that. I'm not doing <laughs> it that. It was like, whoa. <laughs> yes. But that's all right because this is, this is a, again, I'm, is it all right if I, I talk about you to the people yeah. who are watching? Yes, yeah. of course. So when the mechanism cannot take any more pressure, it tells you. It says no. Okay? Now, in this case, Toy's a graduate of a very good program here. She's not a beginner. I can put a little pressure on her vocal cords and say, ah, come on, do one more. Even though the vocal cords are going, I don't know. It's <laughs> not going to hurt her to do one or two past where she's comfortable. Because, mm-hmm. in fact, if we're going to take this mix higher, I have to do that. She can't just only sing nice, nice, and then it doesn't hold up and it cracks. Okay? The point here is that you can do this, and the mechanism will take a lot of pressure, even though you know that it's pressure. So it's not like you're doing nothing. Um, I don't know what will come out if I do this myself, but if I do... <clears throat> There's not a lot of air going out there, so that is a lot of resistance, but then that makes it possible to go yo, 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 because I already set that up. So here, we're asking Toy to stay in this place that's pretty far away from where she's been speaking for the sake of the song, okay? Which is really the name of the game. You're going to get a job here. You got to be able to nail those notes in a place that really is powerful but not kill yourself. Like she was saying, this, everything was hurting and tired. Yeah, then your body is telling you, "Uh uh-uh. So this is why in somatic voice work, I've spent a lot of time on the balance of chest and head in the middle and on the coordination of of breathing and vowel. And then as she's demonstrating beautifully, oh, it gets better. What do you know? 
because instead of working against your body, you're working with your body and your throat, but you're also working in a way that your brain can get wrapped your head. You may not be able to do it, but at least you understand what you're attempting to do. And a lot of times singing training is so vague and so confusing, the poor student has to guess at what you mean. And then if they don't get it, then they have no idea like, well, what should I have done differently? You know, and the teacher may not be able to say. That happened to me a lot when I was a student. So, no, no, dear, that's not right. You know, try again. Okay, well, if it's not right, can you tell me why it's not right? Or tell me what to do instead? No. <laughs> that's not good teaching! Okay, so um, now let's do no. And this I always describe as when you're, you're scolding a naughty puppy. No, 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 puppy. Don't scratch the furniture. No, 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 no. And your mouth is narrow and your jaw is moving. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. That's good. No, 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 no. Okay, now how loud is that? Mm, I think it's about like a five. Yeah, so do it, it at a seven. Let's see mm -hmm. what happens if it gets louder. Mm -hmm. Think of speaking the first note a little more. <clears throat> No, 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 no. Talk on the bottom. No, 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 no. Good, it might crack, it's all right. One more. No, 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 no. Yeah, that's good. Now, let's go back and find, they say, they say we're young and we don't know. And let's see where that goes now. They say we're young and we don't know, we won't find out until we grow. Go on. Yes. Well, I don't know if all that's true, cause you got me and baby, I got you, babe. I got you, babe. Good. I got you, babe. Okay, now let's do the bridge. I got flowers in the spring. Let's try that. Then you can get louder okay. in this bridgey part. Okay. I got flowers in the spring. I got you to wear my ring. And when I'm sad, you're a clown. And if I get scared, It felt it felt brighter in, at the for the bridge. I feel like, and even more open. Um, Did it feel, and it felt clear. And it felt more clear, especially well, in the. It was absolutely mm -hmm. clear. Did you feel like you had a little more control over the sound? I think I did have more control, especially in the beginning verse, um, and I felt like I had more control in the last um, high note for around yeah yeah because we, we programmed your throat now to go oh i have to go over there now mm. that doesn't mean it'll always do that but at least it had a map you know the brain and yeah. the throat had some kind of direction mm -hmm. and um this sound when you make it is perfect for this song it's great so you know you don't want to model share <laughs> she was never yeah. a good model you want to <laughs> sing this more. now this is recognizably you and you don't sound like her okay. um yeah. Now, the, the other thing that you could do, and I do this with a lot of people as an exercise, is that there isn't anything incorrect about your breathing. It was perfectly fine. But this sound does best, all of these sounds do best if you have a lot of air in your lungs before you sing, even though it doesn't use a lot of air. So that's mm -hmm. like rubbing your head and pounding your stomach. Those two things don't go together very easily. Um, and again, I'm talking to the teachers. teachers this this aspect of breathing is, is also very detailed there are times when you need pressure and times when you need flow and uh, most people just assume that's all one thing and it's not so um uh, singing on a minimum amount of air without holding the breath in other words not trying to hold i'm holding my breath but just allowing take a deep breath and then only allowing a little bit go out 
is an isometric exercise. It's something you learn to do because we don't do that in life. Why should we do that in life? But I am not holding my breath. I am releasing it in a small stream. Now that also counterbalances the middle being breathy and fuzzy. But well, most people are taught breath support, breath support, breath support, use your belly, use your belly, use your belly, and that's about as far as it goes. But in this case, because toy is ready for a more sophisticated use of the machine, that's not enough. That's not adequate. So let's do, um, uh, I got flowers in the spring. What pitch does that start on? Uh, I got flowers. I, I, D flat I think. I, I, D flat C, I, B flat genie. Okay. So, Toy, can you sing the phrase, I, I, I got flowers in the spring? I can't find the pitch. And, um, da, 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 and then stop. And then deliberately take a big breath and sing the next phrase. So, in between, there's no, there's uh, no time. It's kind of out, out of time. But you're going to exhale whatever you need to take in another deep breath and sing. Okay. okay. Um, yes. Oh, nice. Okay. Right. <laughs> Is that the key you're, you're singing this? Song? I got flowers. Oh, down, down and octave, right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So mm -hmm. do that from I Got Flowers. Okay. I got flowers in the spring. Stop. Exhale. Another deep breath. Sing the next phrase. I got you to wear my ring. Stop. Inhale. Go on. And when I'm sad, you're a clown. Same thing. And if I get scared, you're always around. Good. What was that like? That was different. Mm -hmm. You know how? More air. <laughs> <laughs> More air. Right. And you had you have yeah. more air in your lungs. Yes. Right. Did that make it easier to sing the high parts? Um, yes, I think it did. It did it, it did make it um easier to sing the high parts. I think this is just a me thing when it was chopped up, I think I was just overthinking the notes which probably added a little more stress on my voice, but I think I did I did feel supported. Yeah. Okay. So this is the tricky part. How do you get that kind of a breath in the middle of the song without yeah. stopping? Mm -hmm. Which means you have to learn to take a deep breath in a short period of time, which we don't do. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, we yeah. just don't breathe. <gasps> but that's actually what this requires. Now, vocally speaking, it really wasn't a different vocal production because it was still in that nice, strong, open mix. The one that you mm -hmm. said was open in the back and pointed in the front. But because there's more in your air in your lungs underneath the closed vocal folds, you have what the scientists would call more subglottic pressure. But basically, the amount of energy in the sound is um, generated by the fact that the air pressure is higher. And you didn't exhale more, really, you know. Mm -hmm. So this is something that you can work on, Toy. This is a learned behavior also. So mm -hmm. this, is, this is where singing goes away from speech, goes beyond speech and um, is really more detailed than most speech, unless you're talking about theatrical speech that's aimed at like Shakespeare, something like that, which is a language in itself to master, even though it's English, it's far away from where we talk. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I think, let's try the whole section with the, uh, uh, the track and see what where you know where you put it, perform it, and let's see where it goes. What the mm -hmm. heck? Okay. Yes.
They say we're young and we don't know We won't find out until we grow Well, I don't know if all that's true Cause you got me and baby I got you I got you, babe. I got you, babe. I got flowers in the spring. I got you to wear my ring. And when I'm sad, you're a clown. And if I get scared, You you sort of changed your inhales a little bit. Did you mm -hmm. feel that? You you said did I change my inhales? No, you short changed your inhales a little bit in the song. Short changed. Yeah, you took little smaller breaths. Yes, I did. Than what we just did. Okay, so by comparison, yeah. you're singing very long phrases and then you don't give yourself much chance to inhale. So when you're mm -hmm. holding on the note get off forget what the the written value of the note is mm -hmm. you know da, and then you can only go <gasps> before you have to come in again shorten mm -hmm. the ends of the phrases that you're on to give okay. yourself a bigger breath before you come in again mm -hmm. okay because you need yeah. the air to build up in your lungs as you're going to the bridge and it, you don't need to hold on to those longer notes nobody cares so you take mm -hmm. a eighth note off or even a whole note off so you have space to breathe mm -hmm. okay yeah that's a lot to think about did i overwhelm you no 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 it was great i really wanted to workshop this song and this was everything was great no this was great yeah well you've been absolutely <laughs> wonderful you sound great and um these are just things for you to just play around with you know yeah. chew on them a little bit Thank you so much for being here today. It was really of great. Course. Thank you. Thank Floyd. you for having me. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So that was just great, right? Two contrasting young artists and both of them have uh, so much potential to, to go on and develop beautiful instruments, wonderful heart, smart mind. Can't beat that. Now, Billy, do we have questions? We have lots of great questions, so I'm just going to throw them at you. Okay. How could you explain physiologically why open vowels are harder than closed vowels? I know this to be intuitively true, but I would love to hear Jeannie explain that. Well, because the tube is, is bigger when the vowel sounds are open. This is from Chris Adams, by, by the way. I, I, I had all, a whole bunch and I lost them. So this is the, this is the throat. <clears throat> Okay, the throat. This is this would be the A. Ah. This is the E. Okay, so this it's I mean this is not accurate, but this is the idea that there's less turbulence in the tube. Well, this is from Dr. Tisa. So when we have the semi occluded exercises, the tube is smaller, narrower. It's not short and wide like that. Okay. So an open vowel is more space in your, th in your throat and your mouth, <clears throat> more turbulence, more air moving, which means that at the level of your vocal folds, both the laryngeal position and the vocal fold closure have to be stable, okay? Now, in life, the only time we sustain a, an open sound is if you're at a sports event and you're cheering for your favorite team or if somebody <laughs> steps on your toe and you go, ah! We don't do that. Even when we, we yawn or something, it's short. We, uh, for a moment, we make sound and then we stop. So to sustain a, a space that's open and sing is not a normal behavior, it's just not. But the whole purpose of working on a singing is to help you gather the strength to be able to sing an open ah without struggle. And it takes time. Whereas in the eval, because there's just less going on, it's easier for the vocal folds to stabilize and the mm, and all the other S-O-V-T-E exercises 
and that's their value because they help strengthen the system. But at some point, you still have to deal with the open vowels because you can't only sing everything on E. I had a student once came to me and she had studied for a long time with some other teacher. And I said, okay, okay, that was good. Now let's do this one on. She said, ah, I said, yeah, ah. Oh, I never sing ah. I said, you never sing ah? Oh no, my teacher told me that E was the best vowel and we did everything on E all the time. I said, so you never sang anything in your lessons but E? Well, yeah, because that has the most resonance. I said, oh, okay. What are you going to do with that? What are you going to do with that? And I mean, the, the number of things that I have heard in this studio that people have been told in singing lessons that is complete, utter, and absolute nonsense would fill two books. Teachers make stuff up based on whatever lessons they had. They don't know voice science. They don't know voice medicine. They don't understand vocal acoustics. And they don't sing well, but they teach. So somatic voice work is out to change all that and to give you solid information based on what's real. And this question is a really good question. It comes up a lot. Why is ah harder than e? Well, now you know. So thank you. <laughs> okay, That's great. Else? There were a couple of related questions that I'm going to try and lump all together. Um, okay. What is glottal resistance and in which cases do you need it? Okay. So the space between your vocal folds in your throat is called the glottis. It's the only space in your body, that an open space in your body that has a name. It's an empty space with a name. So it's called the glottis, G-L-O-T-T-I-S. Okay. Vocal folds open and close. When you breathe, they open. And when they, you make a sound, they close. And then while they're closed, they vibrate. Microscopic vibration. You wouldn't see it with the naked eye. Okay. Now, we know from science that the amount of time within the vibration in the human being is variable. Okay. Now, I can make a little bit of sort of a cheap analogy here because I don't play an instrument beyond a little bit on piano. But if I were to do, we can all do that. It's like a, you know, make a sound with your lips. The air is restricted by the embouchure or the tension of the muscles around my mouth, the lip muscles here. And there's a whole ring of muscles here. So if you can do that sound and you can tighten it even more, which I probably can't do, that is glottal resistance, but it's slip resistance, okay? That can happen in your throat, in your vocal folds. And it's not deliberate. You don't decide, oh, I'm going to have more glottal resistance. You know, it just doesn't work that way. You have to do something that allows them to compress a little more and stay in that p compression better, which is what the SOVTE exercises are for, to help the closure be firm and not breathy. Now you can overdo that and then you end up with a very tight and very pressed sound, which makes your voice like wood and you can't, can't move it around. So it's always a balance between allowing some movement and keeping things still, allowing things to adjust and having them be consistent. And all of that is done indirectly through the pitch, the vowel, the volume, and the registration. There is nothing else. So um, if we talk about glottal resistance, when is it necessary? Well, in a breathy sound or in a sound that's mixy, that's not strong enough. We want the sound to resist falling apart. Right? So we do the closed exercises in the mixy sound to strengthen the position of the mixy sound from the larynx and the pharynx, that means from the vocal folds and the throat. Okay. Now, when I was diagnosed with this left vocal fold issue, where it's weak in the middle, I could no longer do those exercises. They went away. So where I would sing, you know, my throat was like, uh-uh, not going there. And it's very specific. It's right here, more or less. I'm fine up high, I'm not too bad down low, but the middle 
I can either sing pretty loud or very soft and heady. And that is because I can't get glottal resistance in the middle to mix the way it needs to because the left vocal fold is impaired neurologically. And that was caused by a virus. So this is a very important ingredient in singing training that people either don't know about or they misunderstand. And then the students has to compensate for that with breath something, do something with the breath. And really what needs to happen is that the larynx itself needs to be strengthened indirectly. In the um, old Italian school of classical singing, where they would talk about the uh, voce di petto, there was a lot of discussion about uh, laryngeal resistance or leaning on the larynx. We well, can't lean on your larynx, but that, that term is be, that has to do with what I did with two students on the slide. He I had to really think about those middle notes. And that actually is allowing, I'm not actually using a lot of air to do that. Somebody who sings like that, who sings with a lot less airflow, isn't necessarily singing badly. That doesn't mean your throat is tight. It just means that the closure is efficient. So if you're asking somebody to use more air, use more air, sing on the air, you could make them worse, not better. And this is where the relationship between air pressure and air flow and resistance matters. And, and it takes a while. I mean, you may not understand everything I'm saying, but that's all right. Ask my faculty. They didn't all know either, but they do now. <laughs> what you else? Know, a, a related question would be, what are semi-occluded vocal tract exercises or SOVT exercises? Well, um, anything that's not open is closed, right? Your mouth is either open or your mouth is closed. So E is an S-O-V-T-E exercise, the vowel E. The uh, humming, nasal, any kind of nasality, straw phonation, uh, phonation on a tube in a bottle of water, uh, all of those things close down the system so that there's more resistance at the vocal fold. So when you do straw phonation, which is you have a straw and you turn it into a kazoo, that's a semi-occluded, half-closed vocal tract, throat and mouth exercise. And that is to help, for, it gives you st uh, strength and stability. But at some point, you still have to do the open vowel because this is not ever going to be an ah. You can do this all day. It's like the person who had this teacher who said, only sing E. But in English, we have other vowels besides E. In most languages, too. Right? So you, the idea is to be uh, universal in training. Some of this and some of that and some of these and some of those. And then they have to, you have to take all those ingredients and bake a cake. Right? So the training process wastes a lot of time because people sort of have a sense of, well, the sound should be more like this. But they really have no direct way to access it. And that's what my level two is. It's what do exercises do and why do they do them and how do you get them to work and are they efficient when you use them? And I don't know anybody else besides me that's ever come close to that stuff. And make it in, a, in such that uh, when something's not working, you have other choices. Because truthfully, if the student is cooperative, and you're asking for something and they're trying their best to give it to you, the person who's at fault there is you, not the student. And mostly the voice teachers blame the student. Oh, he or she is not this or they're not that or the uh -uh, no, it's you. So we take a lot of responsibility when the exercise isn't working. It's like if you go to the doctor and the doctor is good, the doctor's gonna say, have you been taking your medication? Yes, doctor, I took it as you said. Well, how was it? Oh, it gave me a headache and it made me sick. Oh, okay. We're going to change the dosage or maybe we'll change the manufacturer. And they, they keep tweaking the medication until you can say, oh, yeah, I've, I've taken it. It makes me feel better. Well, we as singing teachers who do the exercise, the student sings and we say, how's that? How's it, how, what's that like? And the student says, like, just like Toy did and, and like Claire did, oh, yeah, that was a little this or oh, more that or I noticed these. Okay, good. You can build on that. Oh, 
I don't know. That seemed to make it worse. Okay, made it worse. Well, let's do something different. Let's go over here. So I went and worked on the low part of the voice because that also changes the vocal fold pattern. Sometimes then when you go back up high, lo and behold, back up high is better. Right? This is what it means to teach from a functional place. And yes, it does. She did notice forward resonance, but I wasn't asking for that. That just showed up. Okay, what else? There were a lot of logistical questions about the Summers Institute. So I'm just going to throw some slides up and we can just quickly talk through those because okay. I had a lot of DMs about when does this happen or when does that happen? So um, the Institute runs from July 13th to the 21st. And there are seven official classes that are part of the Institute. So you've got the three official levels of somatic voice work, levels one, two, and three, that have to be completed in order. So you have to have done level one to do level two and so on and so forth, but you don't have to do them subsequently. So if you did levels one and two last year, you can just come back and do level three this year, so on and so forth. Reviewers do get a discounted rate on levels they've already completed. Uh, and then um, this is just a reminder for anybody that this is Jeannie's last a uh, year as a official uh, faculty member because she is retiring, but um, somatic voice work will continue, but I strongly encourage you to get there this summer so you can learn from Jeannie as I can personally say that Jeannie is amazing and learning from her has been life-changing for me personally, professionally, academically, as a professional singer, it's like just unbelievable. So you have to be there. Um, we also have Dr. Trinise Robinson Martin, who is amazing, is running her levels one and two of her soul ingredients course. Uh, this course will be offered while level one and level two are running, and this is open to graduates of level two. And we also have two additional advanced courses. We have Dr. Anita Kozans working with transgender or gender non-binary voices. So that's her happening during level one. And during level three, we have a two-day vocal health intensive for singing teachers by Dr. Claudio Milstein, and that happens during level three. And then people who do that are welcome to join us for the last day of level, level three as well. Um, there is housing on campus and meal plans available so that the cost of the experience is mitigated quite substantially and all of that information is available on the website and uh, part of your registration package or you can opt to stay off of the campus as well uh, and then just a reminder next week and the week after we have two more free webinars so next week is belting the science and the art week three is vocal exercises explained how do they work why do they work so it's a little sort of like a little preview into kind of what Jeannie was talking about in level two so you get an overview of what are semi-occluded vocal tract exercises? What are these glottal resistance exercises? How do we start beginning chest register and stuff like that? So very generous of Jeannie to share that information, but I think that answered most of the logistical questions that I got messaged directly. Yeah, and I just wanna add that um, Dr. Kozan, Dr. Milstein are two of the most highly respected members of the speech pathology profession. Dr. Milstein started out in acting, Dr. Kozan, plays the piano, she plays the sax, she sings. You don't find these experts just anywhere. You don't just you know, go to your local corner doctor and get this information. These are the highest ranked people within their own professions who are helping singing teachers. And of course, Dr. Robinson Martin is a phenomenon. She's known all over the world now because she's the real deal. And so if you're not familiar with African-American uh, traditions of music which are found all over the world she's the she's the bee's knees you got to go and get it from the source and I no one else is bringing you experts at that level and we have the medical lecture is Dr. Robert Thayer Sadloff who is the probably one of the most recognized laryngologists in the world if certainly in the country and uh, Beth Amin who is a Brazilian jazz vocalist and a speech pathologist in Sao Paulo uh, is recognized in both professions and you don't just get that anywhere either. Um, our movement specialist is Allison Easter. She has worked for years with Meredith Monk. She's a modern dancer, but she also is a movement uh, specialist. You don't find these people just in the old wear. So please come to Berea. You gotta fly to Cleveland and then 
from there it's easy. Um, so we hope um, that you will um, let us know that you're going to come. And uh, we are also a very open community. We share, we laugh, we eat. <laughs> I tell you, and I feed people. And, and we want to change the profession. We want the profession to be different. We've already had an impact, but there's a lot more we can do to change things so that our students can really learn and grow easily and, and comfortably. And, um, uh, you know, ask, ask others to come to the next two free webinars uh, so they can hear more about it. Uh, I want to thank Billy for his diligent help and sending out all the stuff. And uh, we will look forward to seeing all of you plus more next week. Thank you so much.